Hey guys, so I just got done watching the latest Rob Zombie film, The Monsters, his little remake of that. Um, after the trailer went up, I think back in July, I think it was, um, just after seeing how like atrocious that trailer was, I was like, you know what? Let's just watch this. Let's let's get this out of the way. This will be good for like YouTube people and like my friends to um, to figure out whether they want to see this or not. So before I even start talking about the movie, let me just talk about a few things first in regards to Rob Zombie films. Um, I like I like some of Rob Zombie's music. He does great shows. I think I've only seen him like maybe twice. Um, but otherwise, am I a fan of his movies? No, not at all. In fact, I'll tell you this, uh, this is the only Rob Zombie movie that I have seen sober. <laughs> Every other time my friends have thrown, like, Rob Zombie movies on the on TV, I have been incredibly trashed. So this is the very first one that I've actually watched um, without any alcohol in my system. So uh, that was that was something. <laughs> All right. So the premise of the movie is uh, just a um, uh, it's a pre it's a prequel to all the events that happen in uh, the show. Which um, I kind of grew up with, but not nearly to the much extent that like people grew up with like Adam's family or even some other people with like the monsters. And yeah, Rob Zombie was um, like a diehard uh, fan of the show, so I, he wanted to do it justice. However, I think what he should have done um, is take it in the spin that. Um, the director for the Adams Family and Adams Family Values did just do that. I th I think that could have been a much better that could have been better than what we got here. Um, but before I get into the negatives, let me talk about the positives. Um, so if you remember from the trailer that they showed off, it sounded like there was some audio issues, especially with the scene where Lily was talking to um, her grandpa, saying it was. It's like really bad audio where he's like, I can make someone down in the lab. And it sounds, it sounds so, so, so bad. Like the mic sounds super terrible. Um, yeah, they, they did fix, they fixed that up. So at least we had that, or at least I noticed that. I can't speak for anyone else or any of the other YouTuber critics who are talking about this movie. <laughs> um, another thing, another positive that I can give you coming to people and that is the person who played Grandpa, and uh, the fat dude from Lost, uh, the fat the fat dude with like the curly hair. He's in this. Not he's not in it nearly as much as he should be, but um, he does do a pretty good job. Like those two were definitely some of the backbones of this movie. <sighs> now let's get into the negatives, <laughs> and. Yeah, it does look cheap. This, <laughs> wow, this this looks cheap. And there's some, like, some of the backgrounds just look really, really, like, CGI, green screened. They look really green screened, not not good in any way, shape, or form. Um, there's a few green screened uh, animals or critters that are shown in, the, shown in this movie as well. So, you know, we got that. Um, and let's, let's address the two biggest elephants in the room as well. The guy who's playing Munster, uh, Herman and Sherry Moon as Lily. We'll start with Herman. Herman, um, like his tone was all over the place. Definitely not like Fred Gwynn, where Fred Gwynn's version of Herman Munster was very childish. Um, he had like the child of a brain, the enthusiasm of a, of a child as well. And I, I'm I'm definitely not going to do Herman's signature laugh justice right now. But Herman's in the show was <laughs> yeah. I know I'm not doing it justice, but you, you get the idea. His was boisterous, very loud. 
uh, very, uh, very eccentric. <laughs> Whereas Herman's, it didn't even seem like he tried. His laugh didn't seem like it tried at all, which is weird. Why, why would you, why would you take that? Why would you, why would you add your own spin if it's cemented? Why would you do that? That makes no sense. And just his personality was all over the place too. It was like, sometimes he was a bit of an ass. He, um, not a, like not st not stupid and childish in the first place at all. Like, uh, like Fred was stern when he needed to be. Uh, the guy who played Herman in this one was just not really all that there. It was like he wanted he made himself like not that stupid. He seemed a little smart. Whereas Herman, yeah, he wasn't the brightest. He did he made uh, some smart choices in the show, but it, it came when it was like a little too late, if that makes any sense. Now let's start and talk about Sherry Moon. <sighs> Sherry had no idea what to what to do with her hands. Do you see what I'm doing here with this? like keeping my hands like this the entire time right now. This is what she was doing the entire time. I don't, it very rarely did she ever put her arm down with this. It was like, you weren't carrying like pieces of your clothes, all clothing all the time. You weren't. So why would you do this? And then the way she sounds like she wants to imitate um, Yvonne, I don't know her last name, but, um, yeah, it seemed like she wanted to imitate Yvonne, and it was like, and she did, like, a weird take on it as well, where, and I'm, I'm just gonna say some random sentence, um, trying to imitate, uh, the style that Sherry Moon went with Lily's voice, so, it would be something like, Oh, what kind of nuts should I choose? Should I pick some cashews from the bowl? Like that, like that kind of thing. That was the voice that she went with. Why? Why? Why would you add like a little spin on that? It's so weird. And then, oh God, what was the other thing that I wanted? Uh, there was one really weird transition where um, after that, um, when they go to see... Uh, the house at Mocking at thirteen thirteen Mockingbird Lane. Um, th there was a very weird scene transition there. Um, before I talk about that for a sec, by the way, that random weird scene transition that you saw in the trailer—I think it was like a gravestone or a bat or something like that. Yeah, that's that's prevalent throughout the entire movie. It's very weird. It's weird. I get it. Um, but it was like, it was like, the background of it was animated, and then you had, like, uh, the monsters just, like, travel throughout it. Um, oh, God, I know there was something else I wanted to talk about, but it was, oh, now I remember. The time, the time, like, you know, like, the show was basically meant to be, like, if you were in the, I think, like, 50s or 60s. Some of it made no sense. Yeah, you definitely had, like, essence of, like, the 50s and the 60s in there, but, like, Herman starts off before he even met, meets Lily in a Psycho Billy band? No, Herman would not do that. The original Herman Munster would not do that. He would not be in a Psycho Billy band. And then that uh, Nosferatu guy that we saw in the trailer, um... Yeah, he's a uh, DJ like Skrillex and Dead Mouse. What? And uh, uh, what? No, no. That that was that was jarring. They're very very jarring. Um, but honestly. With all the negatives that, I, that I've just said about this, with all of the negatives I just gave, I know it's a lot. This was at least competent. It didn't annoy me 
nearly, nearly as much as Texas Chainsaw did. So, is this a movie I recommend people seeing? No, it is not. It really isn't. Is this worse than Texas Chainsaw 2022? No. So this is probably the second worst film that I've seen this year. And I, unless if it's something like uh, Birdemic, The Room, Trolls 2, I don't actively seek out bad movies like that. I don't actively seek out bad movies. I knew going into this one it was going to be bad, but it was fine. It wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. So that's go that's going for it. But I guess with that being said, I'm going to give this movie a um I'll give I'll give this a C minus. Um it's right it's right on the tipping edge of um C minus D plus. It's right it's right along that side. Um but this is, and I remember, I gave Texas Chainsaw Massacre a very, very generous C minus. That should have been a D minus or an F. That really should have been. Whereas this one, this one's at least competent. The story's fine. The Technicolor issue, which I didn't talk about, is. I, I really wish they would have gone with uh, black and white. I really wish they would have gone with that. I think the movie would have been a little bit better. In terms of like how it looks, I think that would have been a better choice. But you know, I, I, it, it is what it is. We can't really change that. I hope to God there's a cut of this movie that's in black and white. I, the trailer it, that is, that someone edited uh, for YouTube to make the trailer look black and white that was great. I wish they would have done that, but whatever. I, I'm not head executive at Universal Studios. I, I couldn't do that. Um, but yeah, that's that's my verdict on it. Uh, thanks for checking out this video. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel as I ha will be having a review for Hocus Pocus 2 coming up, as well as Terrifier 2, um, the new Hellraiser, Halloween Ends, and some other various little um, uh, Halloween movies. But anyway, um, comment on this video if you saw it and you want to share your thoughts in this movie on this movie. Uh, share it amongst friends so you can warn them about what this movie, how this movie is, and just let them know about it. <laughs> uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel, and then also feel free to follow me at Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok as well. And so, with that being said, I will see you guys next time. Later, Gators.